Okay, so what to expect for this week? As you know, the Bitcoin Spot ETF is about to get approved. Okay, high anticipation for the first ever Bitcoin Spot ETF. Okay, most likely will be approved by the 10th of January. Okay, but maybe we might expect an approval, an early approval, maybe somewhere within 24 to 48 hours. So the hype is quite real right now. And of course, while waiting for the ETF approval, what we are seeing for the Bitcoin market, it actually have a pullback. A uh, slight pullback, as you can see, is totaling about 11% drawdown. So I think this will actually spook the market at the moment. So every time when there is a positive news that is building up, building up the play for the spot ETF, you know there will be some pullback that's coming in. It's always the opposite, okay? And of course, right now, you can see here, the spot ETF, okay, is just around the corner. So what it needs to be done is that the SEC must decide, okay, to approve by the 10th of January. So 10th of January, the first in line is ARK Invest. So ARK Invest is actually a hedge fund in the US. They are actually first in line to be, a, to be in line to be approved. Okay. So you can see here the SEC must reach a decision on an application from ARK Invest and 21 shares by 10th of January. So we have roughly about seven days from now to, to get the approval. Okay. And then though the SEC is not required to approve the application, most experts believe that it will approve Right, the fund along with several other similar applications. So the approval rate here we are looking at is 90%. Okay, so once the ETF approval, usually the price most likely will spike. Okay, maybe for the net short term will spike. Then maybe later on, the price might have a huge retracement back towards the downside. So this will be another concern. Okay, because a lot of people are asking, should I sell now? Okay, or should I add in more positions before the spot ETF? So right now we are on the sidelines Okay, and how to play this uh, spot ETF game. So my take here for the spot ETF is that most likely Bitcoin might hit at least to 48 to 50K. Okay, once the approval is confirmed. Okay, so even though the, the spot ETF might have another delay or might get rejected by the 10th, I would expect Bitcoin price to at least have a strong retracement back towards the downside, maybe at least to 30,000. So because I believe the market has been overheated at the moment, okay, many outs are ready. Many coins are, you know, many people are making life changing gains throughout this time. Okay, many are actually trading on new coins. So I think this is a top signal at the moment. Okay, where everyone is bullish, that's where you might see a reversal that is coming into play. So these are the expectation on what is going to happen in the next seven days, right till the 10th of January. So my, my play will be definitely stacking up more dry powder. Okay, more USDT on the sidelines and to buy on the on the price where the market dips. Okay, so the dips are for buying actually. Okay, so these are the expectation here. All right, so Bitcoin spot ETF approval, most likely it will, it will be coming. So you just need to stand by. Okay, and you need to know how to actually play this game, whether the good or the bad scenario. Okay, very important. Now moving on next, uh, we are looking at the Solana. So Solana also is also another hype and narrative project. Okay, and of course, right now Solana has been overtaking Ethereum at the moment. Okay, so in terms of volume, in terms of total value lock, okay, Solana has been soaring, soaring high by leaps and bounds. Okay, so you can see the trading volume as well for Solana. Okay, you can see that a lot of tokenless projects are yet to release their token. Many are actually flocking to Solana to have a chance to at least get the airdrop. So that's one of the reasons why you can see Solana have a huge chance to actually uh, gain more traction against Ethereum at the moment. But don't forget that Ethereum also have its time to shine. Okay, because I believe right now with the gas fees is spiking, right? And many are actually shifting, shifting sites from Ethereum to Solana. So once Solana is done with the bin coins, with the bin coin hype, okay, Ethereum will definitely have its time to shine, which is this month. This one alone, we have a lot of airdrops coming in from L2, the layer two solution for Ethereum. So once the L2 airdrop comes for Ethereum, I think that's where you're going to see a lot of people are actually flocking back into Ethereum again. So that's how the shifting game works. It's always one narrative after one narrative. Okay. So I think the L2s of Ethereum will definitely do well. Okay. With the airdrop season is here. Okay. So you can see here, Solana overtook Ethereum by NFT trading volume as well. Right, this on December. Again, with the network hosting about 366 million and 353 million worth of trades. 
So Solana side, if you if you're talking about NFT, so NFT a lot of people like to do trading, right? They like to buy and sell JPEGs, right? Which is the image. But unfortunately, Ethereum cannot be able to cope because why the gas fees is too costly, right? You want to buy a bot yeah, bot eight yeah, club mm. monkey monkey photo, right? You have to pay about I think about hundred dollars just for the gas fee alone. Okay, but it comes to Solana. Solana doesn't even charge, not even a single cent. Okay, the gas fees maybe will cost you about 0 0.0001 of Solana. So that's, that's what you can see. So that many people are flocking to Solana because of why scalability. Okay, user-friendly is one thing. Because if you use Ethereum, one thing, the gas fees, it will go and cost you and it will take some time to actually transfer. Okay, that's where the network gets congested. So that is a downside of Ethereum. Okay, and that's how Solana can be able to outperform right, against Ethereum. Right, even for last year as well, 2023, right? You can see Solana, Solana network alone jump about 936%. Okay, it's right from $9.97, right? As uh, as of first of January, it's at about 103. Okay, so you can see the potential. Okay, my X alone, right? From first January, okay, one whole year you're getting about my X return just on Solana. So there are many other coins as well, right? Outperform against Ethereum and against Bitcoin as well. Okay, so these are the expectations and this is the promising side for Solana. So Solana, you have to understand, is actually based on hype and narrative. As long as hype and narrative, definitely Solana will shine and it will continue to do so. Okay, because a lot of tokenless projects, they are still yet to release a token. And of course, this month alone, we have Jupiter. So Jupiter is actually a Solana DEX exchange, decentralized exchange under the Solana ecosystem, where they will provide airdrops, most likely on the fourth week of this month. So with this airdrop coming here, most likely Solana's ecosystem will definitely uh, will soar again, right? It will definitely hit hit up again. So that's the thing uh, that you want to take note on all these airdrops. All right, then next one you can see here. So the next article here we are looking at is the layer two scaling solution for Arbitrum. So Arbitrum is under the Ethereum ecosystem, right? You can see right now the price of Arbitrum have hit all time high at one point eight. One point eight was the resistance, and it continues to to rally again. Okay, so right now you can see the market cap also increases to about 2.2 million. So if you look at Arbitrum, so Arbitrum right now is actually doing a, a scaling, scaling against Ethereum. Okay, so it actually eases the network congested, congestion from the L1, from Ethereum alone. Okay, so we have also Optimism, which is also the layer 2 solution. Okay, why Arbitrum is much more favorable compared to Optimism? Right, because if we look at the total value lock or you look at the popularity side, more and more people are favoring on Arbitrum. That's why you can see the total value lock okay, for Arbitrum alone is increasing compared to optimism. Okay, so yeah, overall you can see uh, the potential here is huge. Okay, once you breach the all-time high for Arbitrum, that's where you're gonna look for price discovery. Okay, that's where you're gonna see a lot of new potential uh, price discovery for Arbitrum. Okay, with the with the setup and of course the proposal and development coming in from Arbitrum alone is much more promising. Okay, what's more with this Q1 of 2024, okay, with the Ethereum season or the L2 airdrop season will definitely benefit for Arbitrum alone. Okay, so these are the things to take note on what's really happening. Okay, and then next one you can see here for Bitcoin alone, right? If you have invested Bitcoin, okay, during the last halving or the Bitcoin halving, these are the expectations or how much you are gaining, okay? What is the price that you are paying, whether you are holding Bitcoin or you are not holding Bitcoin, okay? So you can see here, the first ever Bitcoin halving happened on November 28, 2012, okay? Right, so the block size will reduce from 50, right, to 25, okay? Then the second halving, which has happened on 9 of July, 2016. So from 25 Bitcoins cut half into 12.5. And then the third halving, which is on the COVID season, COVID period was on May 11. Okay, from 12.5 to 6.25. Okay, so the upcoming one will be from 6.25, okay, down to about three, three and a half, right, or 3.112. Okay, so every halving or every four years, Bitcoin production will cut into half. It has nothing to do with the amount of supply cut into half, but the amount of work will be cut into half. Okay, so this is the block reward. 
the block reward will be reduced. So when the block re reward will be reduced, that's where you will see the value of Bitcoin will start to rally again. Okay, so these are the thing. Okay, so investing in Bitcoin in the last halving on May 11. Okay, so Bitcoin traded about 8,000. 8,374 and 9,000 on that day. Okay, so with an investment of 1,000 will be worth about $4,995. That is almost 5x your return. Okay, 5x your return if you're holding Bitcoin on that particular Bitcoin cycle. Okay, so that, that's where you can see what is the potential <clears throat> of getting in early, of getting in on the right timing. Right, if you invest on Bitcoin on the halving or even before halving, on the halving year, uh, that's where you're going to see the, the rewards, right? Not financial advice, of course, but according to the historical data, this is the uh, performance. So past performance are not guaranteed future result, but this is the uh, setup for BDC alone with the halving cycle. All right, so moving on next, another important event to take note is that the, this whole month, okay, this whole month alone, a lot of activities that is ongoing. We have token unlocks, we have airdrop season. Okay, we have a lot of new tokens are going to release. We have mainnet launching. Okay, so yeah, this what are, what are the things to expect? There are many things to, to focus, which is the Bitcoin spot ETF approval. This is the main highlight of the month, which is 10th of January. So 10th of January, all eyes on the SEC. Okay, and of course, ARK Invest will definitely get the approval. So these are the first one. It's the first one. And then of course, we are looking at also token unlock. Token unlock also very important because once token unlock, release, that's where you're going to see price might dump. So example, APT was on 12th of January, right? This is on 12th of January. You can see here red, right? Which is not looking good. So whenever there's a token unlock, that's where developers, uh, seed investors or VCs will get their token and most likely they might dump the token. So during 12th or even before 12th, maybe 10 or 11 of January, might see a price pullback for Aptos. There could be a high possibility of a pullback for this Aptos token. Okay, so there are many more. Not only Aptos, we have also Injective they are going to, to unlock as well. So Injective also is one of the best call that I made for early last year, 023. So it went to an all-time high of $45, from $1 to $45, for $45x from that. We'll be having a token unlock on the 21st, not mistaken here. Right, so this is the one here, Injective and then Ron. Okay. All right, so these are the token unlocks. And of course, if you can look at the Starknet. So Starknet also will announce their airdrop. Okay, Starknet is also under the layer two solution for Ethereum. They are going to have its mainnet launch because currently it was on testnet and they are going to launch very soon. Also on the same day of Bitcoin spot ETF approval. Okay, on the 10th of January. So these are the things here you can see. Potential airdrop, Starknet, 10th of January, maybe. Okay, we have a lot of airdrops here that's coming in. Look at Jupiter as well. They're going to release as well, layer zero. All right, plus these are all the social uh, social platform, okay, that are going to release their airdrops. And of course, Manta, not to forget, Manta also is a layer two solution under ETM. There are so many L2 they are releasing on Ethereum. So later, I will touch more on Manta later on. Okay, and then you can see what else. If you look at the main net, Right, Immutable X also will launch on ZK EVM. Right, zero knowledge Ethereum virtual machine under the Polygon ZK EVM mainnet. Then Injective also will launch their mainnet as well. These are the important things to take note. So potential downside risk, what to expect for this one, which is the Bitcoin ETF sell the news event. Okay, so many are actually having positive wipes on the spot ETF. So maybe market could do a reversal here, and most likely investors will get dumped on this. Okay, people who don't know what's really happening, especially the retail investors or the newbies, right? People, normally newbies will buy at the top and that's where the wheels might want to sell against them. Okay, and then of course, uh, not to forget Celsius, right? The uh, company that provides uh, lending and borrowing, right? So creditors distribution Evergrande, okay, liquidation hearing. Okay, so these are the downside. Okay, and then Coinbase also with this dismissal hearing. Okay, so these are the things, uh, key highlights to take note for this month, very important. Okay, moving on next, uh, we can see the airdrop. So airdrop season is very hot at the moment. So maybe you guys can also participate for, for this setup, because I believe a lot of opportunities here, even though you are new, even though you are coming in late into the space, I would say you are still early. Okay, in order for you to do well in crypto, right? one, you, you must know how, you must learn about the, 
knowledge. Okay, it's not about investing, it's not about trading. Okay, so trading comes last, but investing in yourself, applying the knowledge in crypto space is very important. So this is how you can able to leverage. Okay, so Manta Network is actually a layer two, okay, under the Ethereum. Okay, and it's built on Celestia for layer one. So what you can see for this project, they have raised about 60 million. 60 million from who? Polychain, right? Poly Polygon, Polychain under the Polygon, Polygon system. And then we have Binance Lab also, funding in for Manta. Okay, and then Coin Fund, okay, and others as well have gathered and pool funds and to, you know, to launch Manta Network. Okay, so yeah, so Manta Network here, they have a lot of hype right now and they have already given clarity for investors who actually stake or to pledge their Ethereum at least a minimum of 0 0.25. Okay, a 0 0.25 somewhere around 600 US dollar. Okay, which entitle you for a Manta airdrop. It's, it's just, just simple. Right, you don't have to do much, but you are just taking your Ethereum. Okay, so by doing this alone, you are pledging your Ethereum under the Manta network. All right, and then within January itself, so within January itself, you can able to qualify for the Manta token. So I believe Manta token have a huge potential. Maybe I, I think a minimum of ten times, ten times the value of your initial investment. Okay, so yeah, I think this is a very promising project. Okay, maybe you might want to take a look into it because I think this one is a one life, one is a life lifetime. Because I think this is a one of the best airdrop for 2024 alone compared to other airdrops, which is Jito Soul. So Jito Soul under the Solana network, if you have deposited one Solana, you are qualified for a 10,000 USD airdrop, just like that. Just one, one account alone, right? By staking one Solana. So you can imagine Solana's price was around 40 to 50 dollars at a time. And you're getting about 10,000 USD, just like that. So again, this is a thing, is it might repeat again, no guarantees. So how does Manta able to generate rewards and to be able to provide to the investors? Very simple, these are the few, right? One is restaking. Okay, ecosystem incentive is one of them. Okay, and then we have Manta rewards and fixed native yield. So these are the five, five options or five ways that Manta able to provide to the investors or to the stakers. Okay, so these are the things that you can be able to take note. Okay, and then on top of that, you can see here, these are the timeline, what to expect for the airdrop. <clears throat> okay, so if you are deposited Ethereum or USDC, okay, you are entitled for the Manta box pieces, which is like a mystery box. So you can be able to qualify for NFTs. So that NFT alone will give you a chance to even qualify for more Manta tokens once, they, once you receive it. Okay, so once you deposited Ethereum or USDC, you will be getting this token called Stone. So this Stone, you are you can able to take or you can able to supply, and you can able to earn interest on that. That is the advantage here. Okay, so yeah, you can claim your Manta token rewards with NFTs until January two zero two four before the deposit end. So meanwhile, when you get your Stone, you can able to do staking, right? You can do another yield as well to earn another interest. So phase three, what happens after 69 days, right? Once the Manta token distributed, okay? Right, you can be able to withdraw your Ethereum or your capital out, okay? Right, from Stone and WUSDM, okay? So this is the timeline from January till the 69 days, okay? So maybe you guys can be able to take advantage on this uh, airdrop, okay? But by participating in, the, in this airdrop, you need a white link. So later on, I will paste into the description link for you guys to join. Okay, you can able to join and you can able to participate in this Manta or Manta New Paradigm project. Okay, because I believe this is another huge one. Even you can see here uh, from Miles Dutcher, right? So it's expecting Manta Edra to be one of the biggest 2024. Okay, their new paradigm campaign has only 10 days to go. So you have roughly about seven days, right? Since this is posted on first. So by next Wednesday will be the deadline. Okay, so all you need to do is to bridge Ethereum or USDC. That's all. Because other airdrops, what you need to do, you need to swap, you need to bridge, you need to provide liquidity. You need to do so many things in order to qualify. But for Manta project, all you need to do is just to bridge only and stake. That's all. Right? Staking, I would say, is straightforward. Staking alone will qualify you for the Manta airdrop. It's quite simple. Okay, so you don't have to do much. And then you just wait for January, within January, which is this month alone. Okay, which is this month, it can happen in any day by now. Okay, right? So maybe after the 10 days from now, okay, maybe after the uh, 13, okay, 13 of January, right? Might see something from that. 
Okay, and then of course you can look at the Manta total value lock currently locking at 335 million. Okay, and what are the protocols they are building on Manta? You can see they are layer bank. So layer bank is also under the lending and borrowing protocol, should be able to gather with it. And then you can see quick swap is also a DEX, a decentralized exchange. So there are so many easy swap, right? All these are DEXs, decentralized exchange. There are many platform protocols they are actually building on Manta. Okay, they are supplying and supporting Manta as well for swaps, exchange, and for bridges. Okay, then of course you can see the Dune. So this is a coin metric tokenomics for Manta alone. So total for this campaign, for the new paradigm, okay, for this airdrop alone, about 640 million have already staked right, under the Manta paradigm campaign. Okay, so a total of 231,000 of Ethereum being staked, and then we have 120. 7 million of USDC being staked for uh, this airdrop alone. So you can see huge, huge potential. Okay, I can see a Manta could be able to deliver, I think, minimum 10x once they release their token. Because this is a very much promising project under the layer 2 solution for Ethereum, but small building on Celestia. Okay, and then of course, uh, what you can see here right now, we have another platform here under Shoe Build. So Shoe Build, all right, once you stake your Manta, Okay, you'll be getting this token called stone. Okay, so this stone, what, what you can do is that you can able to stake. Okay, you can able to stake. So when you stake, you are getting about 4.89% per annum. Okay, you supply stone and you'll be earning some rewards. Okay, so you can able to supply. Okay, so once you supply, it will show something like this. Right, so example, I've supplied about 1.11k, 1,000 USD in value for stone. Okay. So while waiting for Manta token to release, I will stake stone to earn another interest again. So for my advice, it's better for you guys to just supply rather than borrow. Okay, so these are the things. So Shubi is actually a lending and borrowing protocol. And this platform, this protocol, is still, there is no token yet. Right, so there could be another potential airdrop for Shubi. So you might have a chance to actually earn another token as well. So you have Manta, you have Shubi as well. Two potential airdrops here. That you can do you're killing two birds in one stone so this is how how it works all right so this is how it works okay now moving on next to the technical side so i need to check what's happening now with coin market cap i think bitcoin takes a dip takes a breather here so if you look on to the market cap we're currently sitting at 1.62 trillion bdc currently is at 142.3 so it's down about 7.43 percent at the moment okay a huge uh, slight dip here Ethereum is about 2.2. So any gainers for today? We are seeing maker down at almost 6%. Lido is also another Ethereum staking. Okay, 3.6 ICP. Okay, 2.92 A-star, 2.19. Any losers for today? Bong, also another meme coin for Solana. Okay, it's been on a hype during the last few weeks. Okay, and then we have Terra Luna. Okay, 17.94. Ego, Elrond, 17.6. So all in all, you can see most of the coins are taking taking a breather, okay? So when you see this type of pullback, that's where you might want to take the advantage to buy the deal, right? Look at Injective now at $32, all-time high at 45 So you might want to take opportunity to look for, you know, to look to buy, okay? These are a huge discount. Okay, near protocol, so it's down about 50%. So you might want to look at all these uh, protocols that you can be able to accumulate during this bull run. Okay, during this bull run, it's very important. Dips are for buying, okay? When it goes up, it's for selling, right? It's not for you to buy at the top again. So you don't want to FOMO at the top. So let's look at greed. What is really happening now? Okay, so right now you can see we are still at greed. Okay, so I think you should expect the market to pull back, right? So a lot of people are anticipating the market will go about 48,000 to 50,000. Okay, so you, you can able to use this indicator. Okay, if you are planning to buy, all right, if you're planning to trade, this is a very good indicator. So what is this indicator all about? Extreme fear can be a sign that investors are too worried. That could be a buying opportunity. When investors are getting too greedy, that means the market is due for correction. Okay, so these are the things to take note. What happened you are seeing right now is that there is a huge greed situation at the moment where the market needs a pullback or a breather. Okay, so that's where you might see the market now is having a bidder now, move back. Now, looking on technical side. So technical side, let's see what's happening now for the BDC. So we can look at total, total, total trade. 
So total trade is where all out coins, total market cap excluding BTC and ETH. So this is only for the altcoin market, the smaller cap coin, from small to large cap, except Ethereum and Bitcoin. So what you can see here on monthly time frame, you know, money time frame closing for last month alone is very bullish, right? But it did not close above this level here, somewhere around 511. So but it closes above the top maybe. So which is very bullish. So we have a bullish momentum here. So every momentum there could be a pullback. So the pullback maybe you might expect somewhere around this level for a retracement at 409.82. Look at the weekly time frame. So if you look onto the weekly time frame, you can see the trend is trending towards the upside, ascending, ascending channel. Okay, so yeah, you just need to be very careful that this uh, trend channel here. Okay, ascending, there could be a high chance of a break towards the downside. So overall, you can see the price is moving towards the upside, but on the daily time frame, you can see that the price have already having an issue to break towards the upside or having lack of liquidity. Market loss is still to push and what happened is breaking down. Okay, so if you draw this trend line here, Okay, so it looks like the price have already booked, right? But it's still creating a higher highs, a higher lows here. Okay, so yeah, overall the total tree is considered still good, but on the smaller time frame, it's having a bigger now. So this might push for the bigger time frame to push towards the downside again. Okay, so I expect the altcoin market will take a bigger here and at least to settle down somewhere around this level here. Okay, then moving on to the dominant side. So BTC dominance, very important, is to measure the strength of Bitcoin. Okay, so if Bitcoin dominance were to go up, that's where altcoins will take a breather. Okay, so if Bitcoin dominance goes down, that's where the fun is, right? Because I believe majority of you guys are actually holding smaller coins or altcoins, right? And hoping for Bitcoin dominance to go down. So let's see whether Bitcoin dominance going down or going up. Okay, so currently right now, price is breaking up, momentum, pullback. So now it's maintaining very well at this support zone at 51.18%. So I might expect Bitcoin dominance at least break this level here, the resistance was here, okay? And then of course, to hit higher at this around here, 58.3%, okay? Then on weekly time frame, what we can see now, weekly time frame, the price is also breaking towards the downside, right, with an extreme sell setup, price maintaining above the middle band. So short term wise, overall, you can see the setup for dominance is a bit sideways. Okay, might expect another pullback again for the dominance on the weekly time frame. So weekly time frame, there is a choppy situation. Let's look at daily. So daily, you can see price close above the middle band for last week candlestick. Last week close above, so which is a candlestick change of direction from sell to buy. So they might have a pullback first for the, the daily time frame, might have a pullback. So let's look at H4. Four hourly, you can see, right? Price have retraced up. Now you're getting rejected again. So yeah, overall you can see the dominance, right? Maybe there could be another pullback again because overall on the weekly time frame is actually a bearish side. Okay, you can see lower highs forming here, right? Compared to this previous high. So yeah, you might have a pullback for the dominance. So if dominance were to pull back, then ops will definitely rally from there. Let's look at uh, BDC now. So BDC, uh, what you can see now on BDC is that the setup overall on Monday is still very bullish. Okay, your resistance zone will be here. Yeah, and before that, if you have any Q&A, feel free to put it in the chat box and I will answer it later on. Okay. All right, so overall on BDC, the chart is very bullish. So overall, the trend channel is still uptrend, momentum. Okay, so the critical resistance will be around 45.6 to 47.1. These are the critical zone. So what happened, it went all the way here at 46K, right? 46K or 45.9. Okay, so now it's having a pullback. So the pullback, maybe I might see somewhere around this level here to be playing out. Okay, this level will be around 38.5 for a critical support zone to, to maintain. Heading towards the downside even more, I'll see somewhere around this level here at 35K. All right, let's look at weekly time frame. So the weekly time frame, you can see also the trend channel is uptrend, momentum, pullback. So overall, the setup is still uptrend on the day, on the weekly time frame. So you might expect a pullback. So the pullback, around 38.5 or the 35K. These are the critical zones to watch for the support zone here. Okay. So yeah, I think it's about time for a breather at the moment. Okay, so we're looking to, to buy on discount dips. Okay, so the final resistance will be here for the daily time frame. 41.3 needs to hold. So it continues to break 41.3. Next one will be 38.5, right? So dips are for buying. 
Okay, H4 alone, you can see huge dump before the hub, before the ETF uh, approval. I think this is already expected. No one, everyone is expecting at least to hit 48 to 50k, but it did not happen. So what happened? Market pull back first. So these are the things to take about the crypto, right? There are a lot of fight, there are a lot of FOMO. Okay, so yeah, these are the other things to watch.